Mr. Good Evening, Unai Emery is beating the likes of Manchester City, the likes of Arsenal in recent weeks. And right now, Aston Villa, as you see it right here, that team is sat in the third position. That can't be true. No one thought that Aston Villa would be capable to compete with that. No one thought they would be able to be in a position to go ahead and possibly pull off a Leicester City. That would be insane, wouldn't it? So because I'm so excited about what Aston Villa is currently pulling off, I mean, at the same time, I'm kind of hoping that they don't actually win the league because I'm hoping for Liverpool, but I want to see how far Aston Villa could take it. So I am going to be rebuilding Aston Villa, not because they suck. They are amazing. I want to find out how far this project could go, especially if we are only given one transfer. Yes, only one transfer a season for Aston Villa. Is that going to be enough? And also, if I do sell a player, that is the amount of money I get to spend in the upcoming season. So let's try and stay net positive here. Before we move on, though, a huge thank you to today's sponsor of the video, Metaball. Metaball is a free-to-play competitive and multiplayer sports game with full cross-play. It is now available on early access on PC, and an open beta on PlayStation and Xbox. To reward early access players, the premium meta pass will be unlocked for free for all players. It is only available until January 31st, and those rewards are exclusive to the early access players. You can use them immediately, but also still have them once the full game releases. I can already imagine that this game is a ton of fun to play, especially due to the fact that your friends are gonna be able to play with you because it is cross-play. Not all games have that and that is truly a speciality of meta ball for sure for me personally the art style of the game is what makes it so pleasing on the eye and on top of it being able to customize my character to the max and really stand out is a big plus so what are you waiting for grab your hoverboard and jump into the game you can download it with the link in the description down below or it will be in the pinned comment too and most importantly have fun playing it Thank you to Metaball for sponsoring today's video. This was the starting 11 of Aston Villa when they played against Arsenal and beat them. So this squad is obviously capable of pulling off great score lines. Ollie Watkins right now is on fire. The man has eight goals and six assists so far for Aston Villa this season. But then also players like Leon Bailey are getting loads of goal contributions. Five goals and four assists. These are numbers that people expected from Leon Bailey initially when he joined from Bayer Leverkusen. So now the fact that he's stepping up, alongside the fact that someone like Moussa Diaby is here as well to play whenever he's ready. I think last game, Bailey got injured and Moussa Diaby got subbed on for the second half. This squad has so much quality in attack right now. Watkins up top, Diaby and Bailey on the wings. Players like McGinn, who by the way, have been unreal this season are just doing so well. And Unai Emery deserves props for this because some people might come across and say, oh yeah, but the big teams play in Europe and stuff like that. Villa do that too. They are currently part of the Conference League, if I'm not mistaken, and they're doing a great job there too. So Aston Villa is not only playing in the Premier League, they're not only playing in cup competitions, in domestic ones, they're also doing it in Europe. So you got to give this team their props. And if you guys have been watching their games this season, let me know which player has impressed you the most so far. I got to say in terms of like surprises, Leon Bailey, definitely the one. Then I would put McGinn onto that list. And maybe even another one on top. For me personally, I love Kamara. I don't know. I... I always loved Kamara when he was at Marseille. I found him to be incredible. I always thought Manchester United should have bought him at the time. Then I was kind of like, I thought he would have been the perfect addition into their squad. And right now, I would love Liverpool for uh, to pick him up. So yeah, this Aston Villa team is going to be a dangerous one moving forward, especially if you have certain players coming back from injury. I believe Matty Cash just picked up a big injury, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken there. Uh, you have the likes of Digne, who has been playing, because um, the main left back, who a lot of people think is better, uh, Moreno has been injured as well, and he's just recently come back too. So the question is, how would this team line up? So for me, the defense is set. Like this defense with Pau Torres, Diego Carlos, or the likes of Konza, that is a very, very good defense. Now, I would obviously play the likes of Diaby and Leon Bailey because of their attacking impact on the game alongside the likes of Watkins. But now the question becomes Tielemans or McGinn. So for me, if I can play McGinn there, I will do so. So I'm going to drag him back a little bit, put him into center midfield because of his insane performances this season. He earns that spot for me. So Douglas Luiz, McGinn, and Kamara in midfield. 
And this is the starting lineup that we're going to go for for this season. So first season, I'm actually not going to be making any transfers, not selling anyone, not buying anyone, just wanting to see what this team can achieve without me impacting too much. All right, here it is. First season is done and they got to the Conference League final to play against Fened, who have a bunch of great players in there right now, by the way. They have the likes of Shimanski, Tadic, Aidin Dzeko, Fred from Manchester United is doing amazing things there. I gotta say, man, I'm really happy to see the resurgence of Fener in Turkey. But can we beat them? And after that, can we actually see where we finished in the league? Because I haven't made any transfers. Watkins is injured. That's not cool. Diaby is up to an 88. Oh my god, bro. Whoa, that is insane. Watkins being injured is not ideal. We also have amazing talents like Ramsey, by the way, who I failed to mention earlier on. What a player he is. When he's fully fit, man, I wonder where he's going to fit in into that starting 11. Uh, but I seem to be forced to use John Duran in this final. I don't necessarily like John Duran too much, but here he goes. Good luck, please. I knew it. Watkins getting injured is going to ruin everything. Duran scored one, to be fair to him. But at the end of the day, Dusan Tadic gets a goal in the 89th. And Ferdi Kaduolu, who apparently is rumored to join Manchester United, is here as well. So let's move on and see how Aston Villa has done in the first season. No transfers, no nothing. I didn't sell anyone. I didn't buy anyone. And they came in first. <laughs> okay. All right. So I guess... Any transfer I make from now on can only make the team worse. <laughs> Obviously, the goal is to reach the Champions League final. But to, to see this is huge. I mean, Villa on 84, City on 84. We beat them on goal difference. We have conceded less. Emi Martinez. And then we have Manchester United on 83 points. Liverpool on 82. Four teams were competing for this until the last game of the season. I actually wonder... Is this a sign of what's to come this season? Now, obviously, I don't actually mean Manchester United being in the top four. <laughs> but what I mean is the whole thing about, like, it being a close season. I genuinely do feel like this season could be one of those where it goes until the end because no one will be a clear favorite. As Manchester City has shown, even the best teams can constantly drop points if they are in a bad run of form, have a bunch of injuries. So that is interesting, but... Going back into this, the starting 11. Now, obviously, Tielemans took over his position because McGinn is 79 rated. So he was actually being played the whole time, which I kind of feel bad about that. Like the team that I set up here isn't the one that actually plays the whole time. I wish EA would do that. If I choose a starting 11, I want those players at 90, 80 percent of the time to be playing. I wish that was a thing because clearly... Tielemans played over McGinn, so I swapped her around halfway through the season. And Diego Carlos, I don't think he plays because Ponza seems to be playing and doing really well. He's up to an 82 and he's a great player as well. So yeah, things have changed here within the first season already. But let's take a quick look into the stats. 32 in 10. We basically owe this champions championship to Ollie Watkins. But then I also just realized that Ollie Watkins, uh, not Ollie Watkins, Yuri Tielemans, 41 goal contributions from that center midfield position my god dude i remember the days where yuri tielemans was one of the biggest talents on fifa he was one of the wonder kids that everyone would buy and then slowly but steadily so many people started forgetting about him and he just pops up with a 41 goal contribution season like that and now everyone will know that he's a threat for the next season i love that now though getting into the next year Let's start making some transfers. So going into the season, I made three sales, which also should reveal the position I'm going for, for the one transfer. It's Moreno leaving. It is Dinia leaving. Now, nothing against these players, but they are both 31 years old. So it's time for a new left back for the team that can be here for many years to come. And then we also have Bertrand Traore, who I sold. So he stops taking playtime away from very talented players like Ramsey on the bench. So... With that being said, that is a total of 45.5 million I get to spend now. Unai Emery is aware of what is happening in Spanish football, so he should know that Real Madrid is already looking at the prospect of signing either Girona's left back or the likes of Alfonso Davies. So, with Real Madrid potentially bringing in a new left back, one man has an open future, and that is Fran Garcia, who is currently 
part of the Real Madrid squad, a very talented player who just doesn't seem to get the confidence of the coaches when it comes to his future in that left back position. Clearly, if you want to bring in Alfonso Davies, you don't think Fran Garcia is the future of Real Madrid. So for me, I thought, hey, we have a Spanish coach. It makes a lot of sense to bring in a Spanish left back because Moreno was Spanish as well. So this one comes in with tons of pace, with good passing and dribbling that will help us moving forward. And then also decent defending and physicality attributes, which we will definitely work on because he is only five foot seven. But this is one of those left backs that you look at in like the likes of Grimaldo. Grimaldo for Leverkusen is insane moving forward. So I'm going to try and get the same out of Fran Garcia here, who is very much welcome to play alongside another Spaniard in Torres. So I think this makes a lot of sense as my one and only signing this season. And I really hope that the rest of the team keeps on growing because there's still so much potential in this squad. And I am actively thinking putting Ramsey as a right wing Bailey, I, I really like what you're doing right now, but freaking Diaby has gone up to an 88, and Ramsey is a big talent out of this team, so I think Aston Villa fans would love to see him on the pitch. Otherwise, they will have to change the formation and somehow fit him in, which I just don't see happening. So here we go. Off to a new season. Well, sadly, I have to tell you that in the Champions League, we got kicked out by PSG. I don't know why it says it like that, 3-2 for Aston Villa, because below it, it says it was aggregate of 4-4 and PSG won 3-2 on penalties. And PSG is actually uh, going all the way and playing against Real Madrid in the final. We won't be part of that. But let me show you something. I don't know what the hell is going on. Aston Villa, back to back, have won the Premier League title. 81 points. 43 on the goal difference. I believe we might have conceded the same amount of goals as last season. That is just insane to me. United second, Spurs third, City fourth, and Liverpool in fifth. Chelsea and Arsenal in seventh and eighth. I mean, <laughs> this is incredible. This truly is something I didn't expect because the other teams have higher rated players. Like, I have put in uh, Ramsey as a left wing for this one. Diaby turned into a right wing so he can cut in onto his left. Ramsey on his right foot can cut in onto his right foot. Watkins has gone up to an 85, which is amazing. The guy's 29 years old right now. Tielemans got injured. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> but I guess it's good for McGinn, who has actually gone up to an 80 and probably played a couple of games. Douglas, Luis, and Kamara both on 86. What a partnership that is, by the way. Uh, Matty Cash got up to an 83. Konza has taken over his position over Diego Carlos because he got past him in his rating. Torres is on an 87. And Frank Garcia... Can he come in with an 80? The guy's gone up to an 85 in his first season. Emi Martinez on an 88 and still a very, very strong bench. So now let's take a look at the performance of the lads. Here we are. We have Watkins on 39 goal contributions. Diaby on 29. Ramsey on 16 and 8. There we go. And Tielemans, a lot less this time around. Has only played 33 games compared to Diaby's 52. Eight goals and four assists. Still very impressive from that position. I got to give it to him. Only a plus one this season. I assume that's because of the injury, generally speaking. But now looking at this team, I actually wonder, like, what position is the one where I feel like a transfer would make the most sense? And it is a really, really tough decision, in my opinion, because... I don't know who exactly it would be. Matty Cash is 27. He's still somewhat young. We can get more out of him. Watkins, how old are you? 29? I don't, do I need to replace Watkins? Or would it be a case where Watkins has become too good and other teams are interested in him and want to buy him? That could be a thing, but at the same time, he's the best player for them right now in real life. And it would be painful to let him go already. So I don't know which one to go for. Really a tough decision, for sure. I've made my decision, and here it goes. We're going to work our way up to the decision. Sanson has been sold for 9.1 million. Diego Carlos requested a transfer, so I had to sell him. He's 32 as well, so that's okay. I still remember the day when this guy was a talent, bro. What the hell? Uh, then we have Buendia, who's, 20, who's going for 29.6 million. And here comes the one that makes a difference. Yep, Tielemans is gone. 70 million was the offer for Manchester City. I let him go because of a tactical decision. Let me tell you what my idea is right now. I feel like we have amazing defensive cover. We have really good defenders and two number sixes, possibly one of them being a little bit more offensive, who are great at what they do. So I'm thinking I'm going to move this position up again, turn it into a center attacking midfielder and find the man that makes the most sense 
for this team right now. Oh, and also the budget for this is actually 125 million. So net spend is going to be fun on this one. So this man that I'm about to sign is a player that has gone ahead and already kind of played with the idea of potentially leaving his team last summer. And right now, Danny Olmo, another man from the Spanish nationality, is joining us. I feel like his time at Leipzig might be done after this season. I genuinely do think so. And I wonder where he is going to go because he's around the perfect age for a player to make that move, in my opinion. So I'm just excited about it. So Danny Olmo makes a lot of sense for a team like Unai Emery's and in the camp position, he can do incredible things. He comes in at an 86 rating. This man is the four star, four star on him. And I still remember that one goal. He destroyed a team. I don't know. Was it Bayern? Is that why I remember it so well? But he scored an unbelievable goal in the past couple of months. And yeah, just a sick player. And has still room to grow and go to an even bigger side than Leipzig. So I thought this makes a lot of sense. We have been winning Premier League titles. We need a creative midfielder. We need someone who can score goals and get assists. This was the one that made the most sense to me. He comes in with, oh my God, six play styles. This guy's going to be a beast for us. I can feel it already. Remember last season, Real Madrid was up against PSG in the Champions League final? Well, they beat us. Last time it was the other side. This time it's this side of that Champions League final kicking us out. And I actually have a feeling that, oh, Okay, now I wanted to say I have a feeling that we didn't win the title this time, but we did. I gotta say though, this might be the one, one of the first times where a team that I've picked for a rebuild, which is technically really isn't, is doing so well consistently season after season. This is so impressive to me. So we have conceded a few more goals and I probably would put that down to the fact that we have gone with a center attacking midfielder rather than a center midfielder who has a little bit more defensive output. So that makes a lot of sense to me. But at the same time, the team has won the Prem again. It really has. And at this point, we already have a ridiculously strong team. Ramsey is up to an 86. Watkins, 88. Diaby, 92. Olmo, 88. Both midfielders behind him on an 88 too. And if I look at this team now, oh, Martinez has gone up to a 90, bro. He's 33 years old. I was thinking he's the one that I'm going to replace next season. But I guess I will have to make a decision between Ezri Konza or Matty Cash. Matty Cash is 28. Konza is 28. Okay, who do I want to sign now? This is, this is a bit odd. I don't know what to go for. I really don't. All right, well, I'll think about that in a second. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look into the stats here. Watkins, 25 goals, 7 assists. Diaby, 20 goals, 16 assists. Ramsey, 16 and 11. Oma only with 9 and 9. That is a bit disappointing, I must admit. I expected a little bit more. But luckily, we only brought him in for like 83 million. <clears throat> which obviously is a ton of money. But still, that allows us to go ahead and still spend money. Um, if we combine what we had in the last, in the first season and what we had in the second season and the stuff that we spent it on, then we still have a bunch of money left. And I'm about to make a few sales, depending on which position I'm going for. And then we can move on and bring in the new player. Just to check for myself, once again, I've gone into the career. 34 million were paid for Garcia. And we also paid 83 million for Danny Olmo. So I still have apparently 53.5 million left from those seasons. And then also on top, whatever or whoever we sell now. 97.7 million is what we now have in the budget because we have sold Matty Cash. So to stay under the net spend, we're going to go ahead and utilize that money properly. Matty Cash was lower rated than Konza. It just made sense. But now the question is, who's the right back to come in? There are many right backs that would have made sense to bring in that have high ratings. But I also wanted to somewhat keep it realistic. And right now it is Lucharel Gertrauda from Feyenoord walking into the club. And the reason behind that is I truly believe in this man's talent. I watch him week in, week out play for Feyenoord, and I truly believe that a team like Bayern Munich, who are looking for a centre-back who can also play right-back, would just be damned to not get this man into their team. I really hope it, ho it happens, because him instead of Mazraoui as the right-back, oh, mate, that would be my happiest day ever. 
But he comes in right here with good pace, good passing, dribbling, and most importantly for a defender, he has great defending and physicality on him. And he's six foot one tall, but still, despite all those attributes, he's so nimble on the ball. He's capable of getting past people in 1v1 situations, create chances, get himself into positions to shoot from. And most importantly, also, he's decent in the air. So I think this guy is someone that a lot of teams are probably looking at and need to bring in. And whoever does and whoever gives him the time to develop is going to be a very happy team because they will have themselves a right back for years to come who can also help out in many different positions. At Feyenoord, he even played as a CDM in one of the matches I watched. So a very versatile player and for us, the perfect choice. At this point, I gotta admit, there's no chance we get stopped, surely, right? So we are now in the quarterfinals against AC Milan and we get past them 4-3. Maybe it wasn't as easy as I kind of hoped it would be, but okay. Chelsea after that. We played against Chelsea plenty of times, destroyed them multiple times in the Premier League, and that is the semi-finalist you put ahead of us. Well, they scored three goals, but we got five. So we are now going to the Champions League final with Aston Villa after dominating the Premier League for so many seasons, man, in ways that we haven't even pulled off with other teams, massive teams. So this is huge, and we're up against Bayern Munich. I love that. That's going to be a battle and a half. Aston Villa first. And look at that. It's the goal difference making the difference once more. Liverpool, you tried. I respect the grind, but you didn't get it. And you got to live with that. So let's take a look at the team that has pulled this off. Because I am very, very happy with it. And now Kamara is red hearted. Why does this keep happening? Why? I want to use my players, bro. We spent so much time. And it, he's like the one where I said at the beginning of the video that he's like my favorite. But okay. It gives McGinn a chance to come back into the team, I guess. So, McGinn, you're going to be playing. I could also use this young man, young, talented player, Idoeg Bunam. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name. It's a tough one. Uh, high defensive work rate. We could easily use him. Kessler Hayden, also another talent from Aston Villa. Um, and yeah, we have a bunch of them on the bench here, which I'm happy with. But yeah, things didn't necessarily go too well for us there in terms of the red card. But hey, we're going to trust McGinn. Five star, five star. That's going to be a fun one. Uh, but yeah, Douglas Luiz looks ridiculous. Is anyone below, like above 90? Oh, okay. So we have DRB 94. He was a 92 at the end of the last season. Watkins 90, Olmo 90. Makes sense. He came in at like an 86. Uh, Torres has gone up to a 90. I don't know how Martinez keeps doing it. He keeps growing. He's on a 91 at this stage, and it's amazing to see. And I actually do wonder how long he could keep it up at Aston Villa if he ever wants to move to a different team. If I'm him, I'm sticking around for sure. So, um, yeah, good job from Emi Martinez growing once more. And defensively, Hatrauda has gone up to an 87. I'm happy with that. The team itself is very, very strong. And obviously, in the stats, we're going to see again Yep, Oli Watkins, 36 and 6. He's gone up to a 90. He's 31 years old now. This is the time for a player like him to crown off his career by winning the Champions League trophy after multiple seasons of dominating the Premier League. Ramsey with his best season, 26 and 11. Diaby, 19 and 15. This is a very good season from the front three, basically. But the rest of the team didn't get involved as much. Camara, 8 assists. Douglas Luiz, 8 assists. Where's Olmo? Where the hell... Is Danny Olmo. Have I missed him here? Oh, there he is. Three and three. Brother, you're 90 rated. He got injured again. He only played 36 games. Wait, is someone else taking away playtime from Olmo? Is that what's happening here? That's going to piss me right off. Hold on a second. Sorry, this is this is taking a little bit longer. Okay, so this Finn Azaz guy has gone ahead and taken away 18 games. And then Leon Bailey has obviously come in as a substitute. What the hell is that guy doing playing for me, man? He's 75 rated. Ah, still, though, almost 36 games with 3 and 3. That is not good enough. Now let's take a look into the Bayern Munich side and see if we have a chance of beating them because obviously they will be coming in very, very strong. And I have once again upgraded my sliders for the gameplay to be tougher. So this is going to be tough. And it is a team filled with Harry Kane, Jamal Musiala, Nico Williams, Leroy Sane, Pavlovich is in the starting 11. And Araujo. Oh, bro, I really hope that's a sign of things to come. Because Bayern are currently heavily linked to Araujo from Barcelona. Apparently, Thomas Tuchel is like his biggest fan. And I'm a huge fan too. Araujo is amazing. This guy has such a bright future ahead. 
multiple years of playing it at the top level for sure. And at Bayern Munich, that would be a fun one to have. But at the same time, I just wonder, like, if Bayern's centre-backs are fit, <laughs> you have Kim Min Jae, you have De Ligt, you would have um, Upamecano, obviously, and then Araujo on top of that. Are two of those going to be happy about sitting on the bench the whole time? I don't see that happening. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens at Bayern Munich in the upcoming transfer window. January is going to be busy, but enough of Bayern Munich. Now it's time to take on and destroy Bayern. When we started with this video, the big question was how far could Aston Villa really take it? And now we are at the furthest point. Can we win against Bayern Munich in a Champions League setting in the final Aston Villa, you got some amazing players, but Bayern definitely have a couple of them too. And what the hell are those arrows? Oh, it's the player base difficulty. I need to turn that stuff off. The visuals, the player base difficulty stays on. Lovely move over down the left. Watkins in the center, asking for the ball to come. And it's Diaby with the header. Or no, it's Getrauda. See? I told you. This guy is amazing in attack. Douglas Luiz, the man that takes the set pieces fast. Villa like, gets involved once more. And Pau Torres. That has to be one of the worst headers, bro. Harry Kane's cross. I can't switch players. Bro, clearly Douglas Luiz is the man that you need to pick right there. But for whatever reason, the game decides, no, I'm not going to give him to you. Oh, that's so frustrating. Douglas Luiz, first of all, should not be in there defending that. Where the hell are my center backs? Hold on. I need to check this right now. Who was the person in the wall? Because I think both of my center backs might have just been in the wall and that's going to drive me crazy. No, we have Olmo and Ramsey in there. So where are my center backs? Where are they? They're all the way back there? No. Pau Torres conveniently just decides, look at him. Look at Pau Torres up there. He's like, nope, I'm not getting involved. I'm running away. Yeah, cool. Sure. Why not? I cannot touch the ball right now. I mean, it are unstoppable. Nah, Harry Kane. Pau Torres, just please get the freaking ball, I beg you. You gotta be kidding. I can't get close. I cannot get close, bro. In that position, you can clearly tell I'm giving it my all. Look at Pau Torres trying. Harry Kane just makes it look so easy. 2-0 down, Aston Villa. What the hell is happening to us? Diaby sprinting down the wing. Musa Diaby, come on. Are you kidding? Oh my God, Watkins. That was the chance to bring us back into the game. Good cross, Douglas Luiz. Even better header. Yes. All right. Paul Torres, offensively, he loves to get involved in heading. All right, good. I'll take that. Two one of these. We're back into it now. Nah, dude. Williams is too fast. Nico Williams is too fast for his own good. Ah, oh, get out of here. It's 3-1. I thought we were back into it before halftime, but instead it's Bayern Munich scoring once more. I'm getting schooled on this game, lads. I really am. Bayern Munich, I'm sorry for even stepping onto the pitch with you. Ramsey running down the wing. There's no one in the center. Why is there absolutely no one here? Watkins, this time? At this time, I mean, Watkins. How many more chances do I need to give you like that? Catrauda, Douglas Luiz, Ramsey. Can you shoot? Oh, yes, he can. Oh, yes, he can. Ooh, big steal. Ramsey. Go on, lad. Find him. Watkins, please. Yes. 3-2. Skip. Let's go. Let's go. There's still a chance. Please, Byron, don't just score easily right now and, you know, make me look like a fool for believing I could come back. There we go. Almo. Inside. McGinn. Watkins. Making a decent run. Watkins, good turn and an amazing tackle. Got to give it to him. That's very impressive. And that clearance is even better, man. They're actually going from a clearance into an attack. But instead now, it's us. Watkins, Olmo. Olmo, please. Yes. Go on. Go on, Ramsey. Do something with this. This might be my last chance. Ah, Douglas Luiz. Don't ruin it. Oh, yes. Douglas Luiz. Diaby. No, bro, he's too fast for his own good. He just dribbled right into him. Oh, lads, I gave it my all. I promise I really did. But we are going to lose this Champions League final to a ridiculously strong Bayern Munich side. Ah, oh, it's sad. It's sad. Is this like the back 
Have I lost a Champions League final in the last rebuild too? I think I did. But still, I'm proud of this Aston Villa team. Yes, Bayern Munich are the ones lifting the Champions League trophy. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to replay this. I never will because that would really ruin the whole point of these videos. And you guys would just always know, oh, he's going to win it anyways if I was to replay stuff like this. So this is what it is. This is what you get on the channel. And sadly, this time I failed. Bayern Munich played much better and Aston Villa didn't get to lift the Champions League trophy but multiple Premier League trophies. And at that, thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate you all. Aston Villa, you guys have an amazing team and a bright future ahead if you can keep this up. Thank you. Have a good one. Take care and peace.